So the fact that we were on that network, that was enough. Going to season two was never even like a plan. It was like, let's just make six really cool episodes that we can all be happy about. And shit, it's a free commercial for the show, so it's all gravy. When we got the call for season two, man, we were just elated, but at the same time, there was this sense of completion. Like, we did it, we did it. And then suddenly, like, you're gonna do it again. And first we're like, yeah! And then we're like, fuck it. Because achieving something and accomplishing is great. I like doing this, little hills. I don't believe in, like, the big climb and shit like that. In my house, we were raised to, like, take the bar, lower it to the ground, and step over it. That makes life <laughs> a lot easier. So the moment things get hard, you back away, you do some little, little victories. And this, to me, six episodes on AMC was a little victory in a big, bad way. And we were excited to be asked back, but at the same time, it was like, oh, now we have a second opportunity to fuck up and lose it all. So it's just more pressure at the same time. And so all this season while they were shooting, there was fingers crossed, there was back and forth in terms of like what the show would be as we shrunk it into a half hour format. And at the end of the day, what we've come up with, I think is really cool, basically feels like last season, but put like this. Oddly enough, it feels like it moves at about the same pace, even though it's the same time. I don't know if that's a good thing to say about a half hour show, but it feels like all the content's there. Like I've watched six episodes fully edited now, and I don't go like, shit, this ain't our show anymore. Like it feels like a quicker version of our show, even though nothing feels lost. There's still like the storyline to the store, there's still like a bunch of transactions per show, and we still wind up doing podcasts and stuff. Like there was a question last season going into the first round of airing whether or not we would be an hour long show or half an hour. Joel Stillman at the last minute at AMC was like, just go for the hour, let's just try it out. But you know, we always felt like there was a half hour version of the show, because we had like a press thing last year at Carol. We were sitting around talking, uh, doing a on stage presentation, and one of the first comments came from the crowd, was like, this is funnier than most sitcoms. And we were like, yeah man, like great, like that's, that's the thing here. It's, it's not reality TV, because if you put cameras in the stash and ran them as a rip, you would see like maybe three people come in on any given day. Nothing funny really happens except everyone's while they mutter something. You can't, I wouldn't be a TV show. So it's unscripted where it's just like, we all acknowledge that there are cameras here, but nobody's pulling strings and go ahead and talk. And the nice thing is they're all very quick at being able to speak on kind of on their feet. So watching it come together, man, and watching it come together inexpensively, it's a cheap show. I'm not gonna lie to you, like if this show was expensive, I doubt the network would have been like, we're gonna bring it back. Our numbers were great, but they weren't like Earth Show. But the fact that the show is very inexpensive, it's inexpensive to roll, that's why a lot of people make uh, unscripted or reality TV. It's the cheapest programming you can make, then guess who tunes in? Real people. Like that was what I, when I was talking to Charlie in the first place, I said, this audience would love to see itself. You know what, you always have shown a depiction of this audience in the media, like I, I love The Simpsons, but comic book guy represents comic book stores and people that run them and stuff like that. So it felt like it'd be nice to put a camera on people that, to me, didn't fit into the dopey stereotype of dudes who live in their parents' basements in Tokyo Lake. Most of them are married, with the exception of Johnson, who does live in his parents' basement. So actually, my argument does fall apart there. But it was nice to kind of put a, a, a hold a mirror up to what I felt were like real geeks, rather than like, with all due respect to the Big Bang Theory, you know, that version of, of geeks. Uh, very, very polished, a very uh, kind of over-the-top version. A friend of mine, Dave Mandel, uh, referred to it as, I, I still never, and I, you know what, I can't even say what he said. I've never watched The Big Bang Theory, I don't know, I've seen a few commercials, and I saw like a little piece on YouTube, and I was like, uh, I don't know if this represents me as a geek, but Dave Mandel is a friend of mine, he's right around Seinfeld, he writes for Curb Your Enthusiasm. Um, he goes, I imagine, when I watch Big Bang Theory, he goes, I imagine it's how black people felt watching Amos and Andy. And I was just like, oh God, that, that deep? He's like, I feel like it really like takes the geek in all of us and just makes them dance in a way that we don't. He's like, it's such a weird caricature. Again, I haven't seen it his words that much. So for me, I just felt like I'd heard so many times people talk about like, you never see real geeks on TV. So let's try it out. And then the irony is, the first episode airs, and there's a litany of people going, these people don't represent me at all. These aren't the true geeks. This upholds a stereotype. And I was like, it, it does. They're married and they're fucking having conversations that aren't like, who's better, this or that. So to me, I was like, I thought we'd broken a mold, but to somebody else, we still hadn't gone far enough. 
And that'll be the same for this season. I guarantee you, as much as I'm like, this is a real snapshot of what real geeks look like, there'll be a, ha a percentage of that audience, God willing, it's not half, but a bunch of people going like, that's not my geek. To and in fact, in this nation, over 50% of people that might tune in might feel like I don't see myself represented because the show is called Comic Book Men, and it's about four dudes working in a comic book store. Now that kind of leaves out women in general. But this was the thing we fought last year where it was like people were like, why don't you call it comic book people? And we're like, well, it's about the four guys in the store. And we're not saying these cats are wholly indicative of the collecting community or geeks in general. It's just about life in this little store. And there aren't any girls that work there or women that work there. And some people said, well, we should hire some. And some people said, didn't you hire one for the pilot? Like, before we went, AMC was like, we would like to see a version of the show with a woman in it. So we would like you guys to bring in a woman on the show. And this was for the presentation reel before we even got our green light for the season. So we, you know, we did it because we we're like, let's all right, let's let's do it up, let's see what happens. But at the same time, we felt like, well, this already is artifice. We don't have any, but the people that work here are the people that you see. So it's one thing to be like we're in an unscripted world. It's another thing to be like, and now here's wacky cousin Oliver. You know, we didn't even <laughs> show them who we were before all of a sudden we were showing them a version of who we are or who the boys are in the story. So mercifully, after the, we, we submitted one of the presentations, 12 minutes long, they watched it, and the woman who we brought in was great. Do you remember her name? So, so it was old. fantastic. But at the end of the day, it, it, it felt like one of these things is not like the other. And everyone else is like way, knows each other and what they look like naked. And then there's <laughs> one person who's suddenly introduced in the mix. And it, that felt sitcom in a weird, bad way. That felt a little too Big Bang Theory based on the commercials, actually. So we submitted that version. God bless him, AMC came back and said, like, well, this feels fake. And we're like, yeah. So then we did a different cut of it with just the boys. And they were like, this is the show. So it still doesn't address the fact that, you know, it's just like, what about uh, women in the geek community? Look, my heart is set on the fact that this season does well. AMC will green light comic book women. And I'll have another TV show, to my credit, which I accidentally backed into. But as of right now, they're waiting to see how comic book men does. But nothing would delight me more than to find a crew of comic book chicks who run just like our guys somewhere in America. And it must be possible. It doesn't even have to be America. I'll take Canada. Just North America in general. <laughs> that we could do a flip version of our show with for the disc staff, or at least with the disc staff audience. Because even though our guy, even though our show's called Comic Book Men, it's about four dudes, I don't feel it's just for dudes. What I saw on the Twitter feedback and on Facebook last season was something that warmed my heart. Some women, I'm not saying all, but some women using the show as a social experiment or a peek inside a male dynamic that they didn't see before. I.e., I don't get to hang out with my husband and his friends. This is a little window into it. And I thought that was kind of cute. I'm not saying that's the reason to tune in. Ladies, find out you know, what your boys do behind closed doors, because I assure you, whatever their men are doing is way more scandalous and interesting than what our men are doing behind closed doors. Um, but it's it, that was just a, as a way of saying like it's not it's not just a boy show. I, mean, I heard a lot of that in advance of the first episode last season, particularly with the title, which is not a title we picked. The show was going to be called The Secret Stash, and then corporate decided that, hey, that's a little too close to something you own, so let's go kind of decide on a title that's more democratic, and suddenly it became comic book men. Right away, you know, you're just like, well, men, that's great. I mean, I get it. It's the play on both super heroics and also they have a show called Mad Men. But at the same time, it's just like, you put that title out there, man, you're immediately putting a hand up to a bunch of other people going, you don't have to come. So I feel every once in a while, and I don't feel like I need to, but you gotta remind people that like, it's for everybody. Even though it's just men in the title, I think women will enjoy it too. Um, and we went out of our way this year, like any criticism I saw in season one uh, from ladies who were just like, why is it every time a woman is presented in the story, it's about her making a boyfriend or a husband give up their past? Or why, you know, a war they're presented in like a sexy fashion or something like that? We went out of our way this season to make sure that it was just people, fan people, you know, instead of fanboys, fangirls. Um, and that's a kind of stop to the fact that, like, yeah, even though our show is about, you know, four dudes that work in that store, people that come in and out of that store are, you know, both gendered men and very universal. So, I don't know, we're, we're at a later birth of this, this season. Last year we were earlier, this season we're a late night show at 11.30 at night. And that to me honestly is a little, little take some of that pressure I was talking about off, because when you're a late night show, nobody expects you to do that shit. So on a Sunday night, if we can pull even some of the numbers and percentage of what we were pulling last season, 
will look like heroes. And, and that's kind of cool thing. Again, I like to lower the bar, step over it. So us being at 11.30, at first I was just like, 11.30, we're a late night show. And then I realized we weren't competing with any late night shows because it's Sunday night. And I was like, oh shit, we're wide open. And it's a stoner television show. Like, that's a stoner TV hour. You know, my people are watching TV at 11.30. So for us to be on Sunday night, it's ideal programming almost for the audience at 10.00. Cool. That's a very long answer to a very simple question. 16 <laughs> minutes. I'm so sorry. Somebody else asked something of these guys.